What's going on guys, I'm over here, welcome back to another episode of my F1 2016 career mode, episode number 7 today from the Canadian Grand Prix. As you can see at the moment on screen we've got our brand new part fitted, the second chassis weight upgrade that we purchased at the Monaco Grand Prix right at the end. So that should help out here at Canada with the straight line speed, obviously chassis weight upgrades really just affect the weight of the car and should help us in a straight line theoretically. Let's have a look at the performance chart because we haven't really actually properly had a look at this over the entire season so far in terms of what the pecking order is. You can see the usual top four, Mercedes still actually unfortunately there out in front. I've seen quite a lot of you guys tweeting me that Ferrari or Red Bull have overtaken them in your career modes, but in mine it's kind of the standard 2016 thing. You can see Mercedes up there at top. You've got the usual top three, top four. Williams there in fourth that we're trying to catch them, but we're just there in fifth, lagging a little bit behind, but we are better than the rest of the cars and the rest of the field, which is pretty promising to see. We have four upgrades installed already on the car. Would have liked maybe a fifth by this point in the season, but, you know, obviously we started off a little bit slow on some of the practice programs, you know, in, uh, in Australia, in Bahrain. Probably didn't do as many resource points as I could have got back then but we're on a roll now at Monaco we did all three sessions we got the track timeization we got the tire wear management uh, perfect and then we passed the qualifying test well here at Canada you're about to see we actually perfected all three so we did all three practice programs to perfection got the maximum 50 points so we came away with I think just over 150 because obviously you have those 25 points you can do for random little uh, things throughout the practice session but we came through and we did all three perfectly which is awesome and really got me in the mood for the Canadian Grand Prix and I felt really good ahead of qualifying. So speaking of qualifying, we're heading straight into it, into Q2, obviously as Monaco was and the, the last few have really. Q1 was a formality, we got in very, very easily. Q2, you can see I'm on the super softs, not the ultra softs here at Canada because I wanted to try and start on these tyres, just like I did at Monaco. Now I know at Monaco, Starting on the super softs hindered me with the strategy because of the tire rules But I've made sure here at Canada the allocated tire is soft tires So I know that my strategy is going to be super soft to soft probably a one-stop for the Canadian Grand Prix um, So I know that I, I looked at it. I looked at it properly and I've made sure that I know how it works So we're not going to be in any danger. And we did get through thankfully into Q3 Unfortunately our teammate just missed out there in uh, P12 and Verstappen also uh, very surprisingly missed out on Q3 He tried to copy the same strategy is me and tried to get in on super softs and failed actually because I thought that was, that was quite funny because we've already um, technically nearly beaten him in the rivalry in the actual in-game rivalry so that was quite funny that he tried to copy what I was doing and failed at getting into Q3 but anyway we're on our lap now in Q3 you can see it's quite overcast at the moment we're in P9 because we've actually already set one one lap time on our brand spanking new set of ultra softs and this this is a second set of new ultra softs because we didn't use any ultra softs in Q2 so I had two to burn up that I could have used so they came in handy because the first lap I did wasn't that great. We pop in a time now up to P6, and I think that's where it's going to end. Overcast conditions. The track was actually a bit sunny at the beginning of the session, so I didn't make the most of the sunnier, probably hotter track at the beginning of the session. So we end out in P6, which I, I sound maybe disappointed, but it's actually really fantastic for us to be ahead of the Williams cars, both Bottas didn't get into Q3, and we beat Massa, which is awesome for us, you know, as we want to try and stay ahead and kind of generally just beat the Williams all round to try and get that fourth spot, establish ourselves in that role. But let's go to the connection. Canadian Grand Prix should be a good one from P6. Let's see how it goes. Thank you, Montreal. Thank you very much for completely throwing all I did in qualifying out the window in terms of strategy because now we won't even be starting on the super soft tyres. We'll be starting on the full wet. It looks like it's going to be starting off with heavy rain, then getting drier as we go on throughout the race, according to the indicator there on the strategy window. So we might need to use the inters, but this is going to be the very first wet running we do in a race Grand Prix. Obviously, we had qualifying at China, which was on intermediates, but we haven't done a race yet in career mode on the full wet or the inters. So as we go on to the formation lap, you can see 430 points. 
points and resource points. So hopefully after this race we'll have enough to buy one more upgrade just as we finish out the episode. In terms of the rivalry update, we've beaten Verstappen surprisingly and our team are still very, very happy with us in the championship. So the cars are forming up. We're here in P6. Let's see what we can do today. We go to five red lights for the Canadian Grand Prix in a rather soaking Montreal. Dump the clutch and get a very gingerly start here to the Grand Prix. 35 laps ahead of us. We're starting on the full wet tyres and we go towards turn one very cautiously, just aware of what's happening ahead of us. We've got two Ferraris and two Mercedes going side by side. Hamilton's taking the lead there from Vettel, kept it into turn one and then turn two. Rospo battling Raikkonen now as they tap tyres there. We've just managed to sink it into P5 ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. We've got a very poor start off the grid and Rosberg and Raikkonen go side by side. Raikkonen's been touched a little bit. He goes very, very slow and holds us up a little bit there. We have to break, he kind of brake checks us. We have to make sure we don't hit the back of him and break off a bit of our front wing. But right now it's Hamilton from Vettel. Then and we've got Rosberg, Raikkonen, and then myself. As we move on into lap three, you can see now Raikkonen's actually ahead of Rosberg now in third place. So Rosberg's struggling a little bit maybe in his Mercedes at the moment, just like he has in real life quite a lot of the time in full wet conditions, just generally very tricky conditions there. But at the moment, just trying to get used to everything. The first time we've been on heavy fuel on these full wet tires. And by lap six, Rosberg and Raikkonen start to pull away from us, actually, as we're just, you know, we just have the pace to keep up with them at the moment in this Grand Prix. And I think that's Raikkonen off. Raikkonen's off. Yellow flags. Raikkonen off and oh Rosberg slammed into him Rosberg and I think Raikkonen's out Raikkonen's out the Grand Prix what on earth has gone on there that is some drama and a half Rosberg drives straight into Raikkonen after Raikkonen goes off the circuit very weirdly at turn one and kind of comes back on track in the in the weirdest way possible way I don't know what on earth Kimi was doing so let's look at a replay at this so you can see there we are in uh, in fifth place right behind him so Raikkonen third at the moment into turn one he goes and at this point oh looks like he kind of have moved his car about so he might have locked up there but he goes straight across parks it <laughs> and then Rosberg comically comes across and smashes into his left front tire and he and it's popped off basically and this was us on uh, in P5 you can see Ricardo still there within a second behind us but that's a, just a different angle for you Rosberg slams into his left front and we go around Ricardo chooses the inside to go around Raikkonen and now this is an on board from Raikkonen let's just see what exactly happened into turn one come through oh double lock up and he literally keeps it locked up through this entire part and then he just parks it here and then oh that's a nasty hit completely breaks the suspension and the wheel gets smashed up onto the chassis there and kind of rests there so very very weird crash for Raikkonen but he's out of the Grand Prix so a bit of bad luck from him and so now we're back live with you on lap 10 now a few laps later in P5 what will be is Massa goes up into P4 briefly but we'll try and get it down the inside he gives us the room there we just nip it back down and we're back in fourth place but you can see Massa there then Ricardo I think that is and a Torosso I think of Kafia I think that is right up there so surprising to see the Torosso doing quite well but of course I think the Torosso is the next one down from us in the vehicle performance chart so uh, not too surprising but you know they're generally not maybe known for doing too well in the wet but we move la later on to lap 11 now you can see on the bottom right my engineer asked me if I wanted to change the strategy because it's actually time to go into intermediates you can see setting a purple sector here and down to the hairpin but generally you can see it stopped raining it's not downpouring anymore no spits of rain on the side of our screen and so our engineer definitely said it's time to change strategy do I want to do it now this lap on lap 11 definitely think I did because you can see the oversteer there I got off the back of the hairpin just didn't really feel that great felt like a bit of a well a boat I mean I guess it would be in the full wet but it de definitely felt worse than it did a few laps ago on these full wet so I come in right now for the intermediate tyres and this will actually be our first time experiencing the Canada pit entry with the manual braking of course in previous games you could just literally fall it, floor it into the pit lane and the game would do the braking for you so the first time we actually had to properly slow down for that pit entry but a lot of people in the pits you can see Red Bull double stacking Williams double stacking and I think also JB is behind us down, coming down the pit lane right now but you can see our team do a great work at getting our, uh, us out of the way and also great timing just from the strategist to allow Button to come in the same lap and uh, I, d I think he didn't get, really get held up that much I don't think compared to the likes of the Red Bulls who were definitely held up both of them were literally just a few seconds down the road from each other and then the Williams cars as well so we're out on intermediate tyres now we cut later on on towards lap 13 the car's feeling a lot better now on intermediate tyres we actually set a pretty decent lap time we're now coming down into turn one we're in P3 at the moment the Rosberg will just shoot out the pit but Rosberg interestingly enough did not come in till this lap for the Inters so he lost about 10 seconds worth because he was, he was 10 seconds ahead of us before the pit stops. Uh, so he lost a lot of time there. 
staying out on the wets for one more lap. But now onto lap 15, a few laps later, you see we've set our fast lap of the Grand Prix yet, and I think the fast lap of the entire Grand Prix so far. So doing well. But then we move on to lap 18, on towards lap 19, and you can see we're falling back from Rosberg now, losing some time. A very odd stint this intermediate uh, period was, because I was able to push a bit for a few laps, set a nice purple time, actually, and then I'd fall back and not really have the grip, and it would be a red lap time, unfortunately. And we move on to lap 25 now, quite considerably, quite a few laps later on to the Grand Prix. And again, you can see purple first sector, it's just a very, very odd stint for me. Very, very odd. Like, the tyres weren't wearing out, but it seemed like I could only push for three laps or two laps, then I had to back off, do some red lap times, and then kind of push again and be able to go purple once more. But at the moment, my engineers think we're definitely on the right tyre. I kind of had an inkling maybe we need to get fresh inters on. But as I was scratching my head, trying to figure out how these tyres were going to work in race trim, up ahead for first place is actually quite a nice battle between Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel. As they come down to the hairpin, Hamilton locks up. Double lock up goes wide. Vettel does the switchback and very different to what we've seen in real life an actual battle for first place racing each other hard in the wet conditions and so Hamilton comes back later on into the Grand Prix in this intermediate period and he doesn't have DRS just pure slipstream with the Mercedes and obviously we've seen from the vehicle performance chart Mercedes still very much ahead of Ferrari but not by too much so Vettel able to try and keep up with him he hits the grass a little bit there but Hamilton gets into first place but then later on Vettel tries to close up to Hamilton on the very next lap I think this is but you can see a lapped car there of Sauber I don't know I'm not too sure which Sauber it is, but Hamilton and Vettel have to navigate both. And this is where Vettel gets a bit unlucky and maybe potentially loses the chance to maybe win this Grand Prix. As we come through into the first chicane, obviously, of the lap, Hamilton goes through, Vettel does, but the Sauber sticks it down the inside and Vettel has to go quite slowly to give him the room there. Loses quite a bit of time, considerably actually getting a lot of oversteer. And so Hamilton waltzes his way into the lead for now. And we cut back live to our POV, lap 28. And you can see it's now definitely getting towards the dry period. You can see it's not sunny at the moment, but the, dra the track definitely looks very bone dry. And, you know, there might be a bit of spray on the intermediate tyres. You know, you, you look at the bottom of your screen. But at this point, I was very, very confused. I thought, oh, surely it's time for the dry tyres. It looks so dry on the racing lines. We move on to lap 30, two laps later. It was even drier. I was actually really struggling for grip through that right hand. You can see the car wobbled around there. And actually, Rosberg up ahead of us in third place was actually getting held up by some lapped cars. And so this might be a chance for us to go and overtake him. Maybe some lapped cars, obviously, get, if we get past them. But Rosberg really got held up quite a treat. Again, he was about 10 seconds ahead of us and then got held up by, you know, last time it was getting held up by his own decision to stay on the on the wet tyres. And then here, it was these lap cars that we got. We got past Gutierrez there quite nicely as he did a, a kind of skid into the right hand to, to get down his inside. And now we should be able to get past Ericsson here. You can see the DRS has been activated, which usually means it's time for the dry period. So I think it's time to come in for the dry tyres on this lap. So I'm actually going to set that there on the menu on the Ultra Softs because we only got a few laps left of the Grand Prix. So we swoop around the Renault and we'll get past the Sauber. But let's see if Rosberg and these cars decide to come in. Let's see if they're going to be bold enough. No, they're not. Rosberg does not come in. We're going to be, it, look like, it looks like we're going to be the very first car along with the, with the Renault behind us to come in for dry tyres. So Rosberg, again, taking a gamble to stay out on the tyres. He's already on for at least one more lap and I think that's going to come back to bite him. So here we come in for the Ultra set of, of tyres. At this point, I've been told my teammate is Alter coming in, I think. So Jensen Alter making that decision. So hopefully that will help him jump up the order. I think he's around fighting for maybe P10, the last points paying position. So we're out on these purple tyres and hopefully we'll be setting some purple lap times. We come out straight behind Felipe Massa, who's on the intermediate still. You can see straight out of the box, a little bit of oversteer, but there you go. Teammate in the pit. So Jensen coming in for the dry tyres as well, but Massa up ahead and also Sainz in the Toro Rosso on the intermediate still. We swoop round on the right hand side, round the outside of Felipe Massa on intermediates and we're getting some good grip here, but at the same time, still going quite gingerly because there's it just feels a little bit too cold for the Inters to, for the for the ultras I should say to kind of rubber in but at the same time we're getting some great grip through the mid part of the corners so right behind Carlos Sainz now in the Toro so down the inside into the hairpin a pretty standard move very nice and cautious easy on the throttle out of the corner and we're up into fifth place at the moment so now it's just a case of looking at where Rosberg is going to be we come across the line and if you look in the top left we're up into P3 ahead of Nico Rosberg who's only just coming down the pit lane now we go a little bit deep into the first turn but we are up in a podium position at the moment with only three laps left 
of the Canadian Grand Prix. This would be fantastic. One of my favorite circuits on the calendar to get a podium in this McLaren in very, very changeable conditions here and a very tough race at the beginning trying to keep up with these guys. But Rosberg again has made the wrong call staying out. I don't know why. He could have maybe double stacked with Hamilton, who's clearly an ultra because he's leading the Grand Prix at the moment with Vettel. But look at that. So many people saying uh, fast laps of the Grand Prix. There was Verstappen. Now Button, my teammate, said the fast lap of the Grand Prix. Everyone's going purple at the moment. But as we move on to lap 34, the second last lap of the Grand Prix, come across the line for a green lap time. So we've improved. But behind us, Rosberg and Ricardo setting much faster lap times. About three seconds a lap faster than I was on that previous lap. And they're both, I think, very close together. So they're both trying to fight for potentially the chance to maybe overtake me at the very end of the Grand Prix for this podium position. Hopefully, we've only got one and a bit laps left to go. We can hopefully hang it through. And as we cut on to the very last lap of the Grand Prix through the final chicane, you can see just how close Ricardo and Rosberg got to us. But we come across the line for third place. Ricardo gets Rosberg on the last lap of the Grand Prix for fourth place. But we come through for a second podium of the season. And that is an absolute story. Hamilton wins the Grand Prix, keeps the lead there from when he did earlier on the Grand Prix. As I said, Vettel kind of lost it there after he got held up by that Sauber. So he comes home in second, but here we are. Third place on the podium, our second trophy of the season. That's absolutely awesome. And I think a lot more deserved than the one we had at China. China was a very weird Grand Prix, and I really didn't know what was going on with the pace of the AI. And, you know, we just we had to kind of hold it in P3. But here today, we've done the strategy call perfectly. We also did well to keep up with everyone in the wet and not fall behind too much also in the intermediate periods. And it was a really tough one, you know, especially the intermediate tires. I talked about my issues with going fast for a few laps and going slow. And it was a really weird one. So I'm so happy to come through for third place that's awesome and as I said that might one of my favorite tracks on the calendar probably one of actually probably my favorite track on the calendar to be honest over the course of all the F1 games and we come home in third place that's awesome so we climb up the championship order ahead of Valtteri Bottas now and the constructors we closed up on Williams just a little bit we're still behind them so still need to try and do the work to try and get that fourth place slot but guys if you enjoyed that Grand Prix smash that like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're anti do subscribe for weekly Formula 1 content as we move on now to the very end of the Grand Prix we get the resource points and you can see here for being first driver if you miss Monaco we got promoted to first driver in McLaren so we get a bonus of that and that will comfortably see us over the mark to get another upgrade so we'll be doing that just after we look at this we get all the objectives obviously plus one plus one plus one so McLaren are very very happy with us we look at the career score all good we go to our laptop and now we can definitely purchase a new upgrade just ahead of the Baku Grand Prix so before we move on to episode eight and we round out the video let's look at what upgrade we could get looks like downforce is going to be the one that gets us the most. So I was thinking maybe drag, because obviously Baku's quite a long, you know, got long straights, but the downforce looks like, looks like it's going to get us the most upgrade points, and even though maybe we, we want a drag update for Baku, I think also being Baku, a new circuit, I'm going to need all the help I can get in the corners and have the downforce there with the McLaren, so I went for that. So that will be for next episode of the Baku Grand Prix tomorrow, guys, episode number 8. But guys, if you have enjoyed this video, again, hit that like button, let me know what you thought. If you're new around here, then do subscribe for weekly 4 on content. I've been Ava. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.